The Call of the Wild, Chapter 2, Part 3. His most conspicuous trait was an ability to scent the wind and forecast it a night in advance. No matter how breathless the air when he dug his nest by tree or bank, the wind that later blew inevitably found him to leeward, sheltered and snug. And not only did he learn by experience, but instincts long dead became alive again. The domesticated generations fell from him. In vague ways, he remembered back to the youth of the breed, to the time the wild dogs ranged in pack through the primeval forests and killed their meat as they ran it down. It was no task for him to learn to fight with cut and slash and the quick wolf snap. In this manner, had fought forgotten ancestors. They quickened the old life within him, and the old tricks which they had stamped into the heredity of the breed were his tricks. They came to him without effort or discovery, as though they had been his always. And when on the still cold nights he pointed his nose at a star and howled long and wolf-like, it was his ancestors, dead and dust, pointing nose at star and howling down through the centuries and through him. And his cadence was their cadences, cadences which voiced their woe and what to them was the meaning of the stillness and the cold and dark. Thus, as a token of what a puppet thing life is, the ancient songs surged through him and he came into his own again, And he came because men had found a yellow metal in the north, and because Manuel was a gardener's helper, whose wages did not lap over the needs of his wife and diverse small copies of himself. And that's the end of chapter two. We'll start chapter three in the next video. Tigger says ta-ta for now. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. Bye-bye.